Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous face washer or washcloth or whatever you want to call it. Um, I will be using this as a washcloth for, believe it or not, my face. <laughs> um, it is made with, it looks like half doubles and a back loops, doesn't it? No, this is made with what we call a linked double crochet stitch. Now I have actually made a blanket with this stitch. I have actually started designing a jumper with this stitch. Now I love this stitch so much. I really do. It's one of the stitches that I always go back to um, when I want to do something different and this is it. All right. Now what did I use? I used 30 grams of Karen Cakes, Karen Cakes cotton. All right. Now I, this is not all of what I used. I used this for something else as well. So I just wanted to let you know roughly what you will need. You will need, you will need your five millimetre hook. And I did actually use a five millimetre hook in the tutorial. Yes, you will. Now you, it, this is actually, oh, by the way, guys, if you are here in Australia, this is a number four yarn, which is actually a 10 ply cotton. So if you want to make a similar sort of item and you can't find Karen Cakes, then just look for a 10 ply cotton, okay? Uh, you will need your scissors. You will need that darning needle. I'm sorry, you know, a couple of ends. Not as much as mine, obviously, which I'll explain in a minute. You'll need your hook. You'll need two stitch markers. I had three lying about, so I, you know, swip and swapped as you do. Now, why did I have more ends to weave in than most people? Because yours truly, mm, I don't like sharp color change in the middle of a row. Call me crazy. I know, but I will actually cut the yarn at the end of a row and then add the colour that I like. Um, I know the yarn like this is made for you to just go, go, go. And it's okay when you are creating um, little bags and things like shopping bags. Um, that's okay. But when you're making something that is pretty, you know, in your face and dominant, you want that dominance to be even and correct. Again, call me crazy, but that's what I did. So I changed colour here and I changed colour there. I could have kept going with the bone colour, but I wanted a little bit of blue. I wanted a little bit of nostalgia. I find this look is what we used to have when we called them in the old days, face flannels <laughs> from memory, and they were the old days. And so that's the look I was going for. And that's it. All right, guys. So I'm not going to say any more because the rest of it's discussed in the tutorial. I will, however, mention, I will, however, mention uh, that the width of your piece is 20 centimetres or 8 inches and the length of your piece is 21 centimetres or 8.5, roughly 8.5 inches. If you wanted it bigger, just cast on more chains than I did. Now, I think I did 26, 27. I can't even remember. When you get to the part where I tell you exactly what I did, just do more, okay, if you want yours wider. If you want yours longer, do more rows, okay? So just do what it is that suits you for what pattern or what style or what item that you are making, but do it in the linked double crochet stitch. It is an absolute gorgeous stitch. But there you go. I just love it. Love it to pieces. It's a stitch I use when I don't want my work to be really gappy okay and I don't want my stitches to be too small like a half double crochet so I like to use the linked double crochet stitch I think it's very basic it's a one stitch repeat that's it one stitch once you see that stitch that's what it is all the way around there it looks different it looks ridged like half double crochets doesn't it no it's not it is just a one stitch repeat I hope you love this stitch as much as I do and thanks for watching don't forget guys we have lives here on wow crochet wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m and saturday morning at 10 a.m melbourne australia time of course <laughs> um, so join us there and we'll discuss the weekly projects that we make including your washcloth thank you so much for watching and good luck with your cloth Alrighty, so we're going to start off with a quick slip knot and that is grabbing your tail end wrapping it around your finger once and twice holding it there and there Grab your back loop, passing it halfway over, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over, popping your hook in and giving your work a tuck. All right. Try not to have too much of a short tail here. It's a little bit hard to weave in at the end. Okay. All right. So 
In reference to your washcloth, you can cast on as many chains as you like. I'm going to cast on 25 for now. Yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once. Okay, yarn over two. That's two chains. Yarn over three and four and five. All right, so you cast on as many chains as you like. I'm going up to 25, okay? Alrighty guys, I have done 25 chains. I'm going to cast on another one and two. Not for anything. There's no counting here. I just want to roughly have at least 25 double crochets across and it doesn't even matter if it's 26 or 27 or 30. It doesn't matter because there's no count in this particular um, piece. However, if you want to count to make sure your work is straight, which I'll explain in the middle of um, our tutorial, you can. All right, so it's yarn over your hook because we are going to start off with a double crochet in your third stitch. So that's your first, that's your second, and that's your third. Now, a lot of people put their hook in that first loop. Yours truly is going to turn the work and see that little bump right there. That's where I'm going to put my double crochet so we'll do it again one two and three whoops so one two and three turning your work and there's that back bump right there pop your hook in yarn over and you should have one two three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two now for the next bit a lot of people do double crochets I'm not going to do that we're going to go straight into the linked double crochet. Now the linked one, a little bit tricky, but it's not difficult. It's just easy to accidentally forget and start doing double crochets. <laughs> so don't do that. And don't do single crochets or chains in between, which is also easy to do. So you're popping your hook, see that side stitch right there? Yes, you're popping your hook in that side stitch. You're pulling a loop through. You have two loops on your hook. Then you are going to go into that next stitch, but we're working in the back bump. So I'm going to go into that back bump right there, pull a loop through, and you still have your three loops on your hook like you would if you were doing a normal double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. What this does with the stitch is it closes it up together a little bit, making less gaps. It's not as small as a half double crochet, and not as tall as a double crochet. So it's a really unusual stitch. Okay, but it's not difficult. Once you get the hang of it, it's just repetitive. So pop your hook in that side stitch, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook. Then you're gonna pop it in your stitch, but we pop it in that back bump. And now it's easier to find the back bump because your work is forcing your chains to sit forward. So you've got your three, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through the last two. Grabbing that side stitch again. Pull up a loop, two loops. Turn your work, back bump. All right. Now, with this particular stitch, I've actually made um, little vest tops. I've made blankets. It can, um, once again, in the side, pull the loop through, two loops, in your back bump, and through and doing completing your normal stitch it can um, be a bit long and tedious at first but after about the third row it kind of just flows um, it comes naturally to pop your hook into that side stitch pull a loop through and popping it in your stitch hopefully yours is not as tight as mine Shh. <laughs> all right and I'm telling you I love this stitch and it looks perfect in washcloths because it's a closed look um, like it's not exactly the open double crochet look that you get okay when you're doing your double crochets so how cool is that well, let me just pick up speed a little bit well this yarn is great to work with um, only it twists around my finger a lot that's funny because I twist it <laughs> as you do yeah all right for those of you who are joining us new today, um, I'm a little bit tired today and a little bit subdued <laughs> because we completed our giveaway on the weekend. Yes, we had six winners who are very happy today. 
I've already been contacted by four. I hope the other two contact me soon. Um, and they'll be receiving their prizes very, very soon. So we do lots of giveaways here. Um, and sometimes I do what you call a spot giveaway, which will mean I usually send out something small to people who I feel um, who have a lot of fun here at Wild Crochet and really, really love to have a chat <laughs> and be a little silly with us on our lives. And we have our lives on Wednesday afternoons and Saturday mornings every week. Wednesday is 4 p.m and Saturday mornings 10 a.m. and that is Melbourne Australia time if you are overseas there you go okay so oh, we do have a lot of fun and here oh dear the sun is going down oh it happens well, it's not going down it's just hiding behind some clouds it'll come out in a moment and then we'll get more lighting on the table <laughs> all right so here we go side stitch and in that back bump, we're getting close towards the end, guys. I don't know how many stitches you cast on, okay? Now, this is how many I did. I would have, should have put it on fast, shouldn't I, for you? <laughs> we'll do that in another round, eh? <laughs> All right. I just wanted to get you towards the end of this stitch so you can see what's going down. And yours truly did forget to put a stitch marker in the first stitch we did. Naughty me. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep going towards the end towards the end and we'll pop a stitch marker in that one so I don't forget remind me guys okay just shout at me stitch marker <laughs> all right there's your back bump now it's a little bit difficult towards the end to find that back bump I noticed this is your second last stitch right there so the back bump is easy to find and then you go through that side stitch again and now you've got one last stitch a little difficult to find that back bump but it is there okay pop your hook in and do your normal stitch as usual and what you should have is that all right now if I were you I would count the stitches oh I didn't go that far out there we go that's better I would count your stitches across I'm going to count mine I've either got 25 or 26 can't remember what we cast on now one two oh sorry guys and to to count your stitches you can either count the posts you see there these are posts or you can count your little v's that you see on top okay and in the first row i usually just count the posts after that i make sure i focus on v's okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and a double 26. Okay, it doesn't matter. What does matter is if the next row you have 28 or 30 or 22, then you've done something wrong. Okay, so the only reason we do need count in this pattern is to make sure that the count's exactly the same when we finish. If you are short, then you're in trouble. If you're um, uh, if you've got more then you've done like I've done in the past where I've added a chain or a single crochet and I've done that many times in the past Shh, don't tell anyone because I'm supposed to be like the expert yeah <laughs> okay so you're turning your work and you turn your work whichever way you like and we are starting each row not with chains but with single crochets now having a look there's your first stitch that you're actually in you're going to put a single crochet in there so all you're doing is popping your hook in that stitch pull up a loop you have two loops on your hook yarn over pull through both loops and now what we're going to do like we do with our linked double crochet see that side stitch there you're going to pop your hook back in pull up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over through two you've done a single crochet on top of a single crochet and because Mary was naughty in the previous round and forgot to put a stitch marker in pop one in now <laughs> so you pop it through those two loops right there of this top single crochet okay now to start off your link double crochet you're going back into that side stitch that you were in before pull up a loop and there's your next stitch right there you can't miss it you can see through it pop your hook in pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two all right 
start your side stitch again actually a linked double crochet I call it a side stitch because you're popping your hook in the side thread of the stitch okay so pop your hook in your next stitch pull your loop through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two into that side stitch pull up your loop straight into your next stitch and that's the V's you're putting them through right there and there you go you know how to do this linked double crochet now you just have to know and make sure you pop it all in the same place where it should go side loop up loop, hook in loop up loop through and loop through you don't have to remember much it's to me I think it's a lot easier than a double crochet there's no yarn overs at the beginning and you're just going ahead and it's like a flow it literally does just flow watch there there and flows there's no stopping to pull yarns over and so on you know it's just a flow I love 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 Okay, a couple of stitches left. There. Okay, here's where it gets a little tricky. Pop your hook in, pull your loop through. Now you do have that stitch there. True, yeah? So you pop your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, like normal. However, you have this left. There are chains there. So you're going to pop a hook in, pull up your loop and getting it ready. And right here you have two loops. Now these are the loops I should have put a stitch marker in earlier. And it would have made it a lot easier to pop your hook through, which we will remember to do each round now. So pull your loop through like normal, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Now just pop your loop up. Now from memory I had 26 uh, linked double crochets in a... Oh, that didn't work in a row okay so I'm going to make sure I have 26 now now it's it's harder to count your posts because it's all kind of joined together all right so your best way of counting your stitches is by counting your V's so you've got those V's right there it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26 with your um, stitch marker. All right, we're just going to keep going for now. And like we did before, we are turning our work. Now, it doesn't matter which way you turn, as long as you re remain consistent throughout your piece. All right, remember what we did before, that very first stitch? We popped a single crochet in there and we pulled up a loop. You've got your two loops, yarn over, pull through two. Then we did another one, but on the side of the stitch, like we do our linked double crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Grabbing a stitch marker, and this is what I should have done before, and popping it through those two little loops you see right there, and that is the stitch, all right? Now, once again, you are popping your hook in that side stitch, pulling a loop through, and you are jumping straight into that very next stitch right there with your normal linked double crochet. So nothing is going to change in this round. Okay, so just keep going with your linked double crochet in every stitch across. All right, so what I would like for you to do, Continue that, get to your very last stitch there. We'll put another stitch marker, just show you where the last stitch is. All right, so there's your stitch marker that we're going into towards the end, the very last stitch. This stitch is right before it, okay? So what I want you to do is continue in your row, get to that first stitch marker and meet me there. All righty guys, so here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna take out that second last stitch marker. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so what you're doing, like you were doing for the rest of the row, you are popping your side stitch 
and into that you're doing your linked double crochet. Now you have your stitch marker. I would leave it there for a minute because it helps you find those two loops that you need at the end of the row. So pop your hook in your side stitch, pull your loop through and then pop it into that stitch marker stitch right there. And if you want, you can now take your stitch marker out, grab your tail, pull it through, your loop, sorry, pull it through, not your tail, get it right, Mary. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And we're gonna turn our work like normal. Once again, we're gonna do that single crochet in that stitch right there yes and then your side single crochet in the same stitch always in your first stitch this is what you're going to do and then you grab your stitch marker and you pop it through that the two loops of that stitch now when you get to the end of the row you're going to do exactly what you did at the end of this row to start your rows again remember we pop our hook back in that side stitch that we started with Pulling our loop through, jumping straight into your very next V. All right, how super cool and easy is this stitch? Going into your side stitch, pulling a loop through, into your stitch, and you know the rest because you have done quite a few rows already. Too super duper easy, I think. All right, so what I want for you to do, you're thinking, oh no, don't leave us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only leaving you for a short while. <laughs> you need to pause the video for a minute, okay? And you need to head off on your own. You're thinking, no, please don't go. <laughs> don't cry, I'll be back. Um, <laughs> so I'm so naughty, I know. Um, so we have our four rows. And was it one, two, three? This is the fourth row, okay? Now, the size of your washcloth is entirely up to you. OK, I will do the amount of rows that I need, including the row that we're about to do. I'm going to be doing another 15 rows. Meet me back here on your very last stitch marker stitch. Don't forget to put your stitch markers in. If you are new, you might need the stitch markers. If you are already an avid crocheter or, or you know, an intermediate crocheter, you may not need those stitch markers. But I find with this stitch, it's a lot easier to have them because this stitch tends to turn your stitch a little okay so it is a lot easier to pop them in now if you find when you have finished your rows and your count is too many stitches let me show you what happens so that you know what what to expect when you are doing if you find that there's too many stitches in a row what you've done is you've accidentally done this yes you've done your single crochet instead of jumping in there and then you've gone into the stitch and you've done a double crochet, your linked double crochet. So what that's done is it's formed an extra V, okay? And you'll be able to tell, it'll have like a little bump there. And at the end of the row, when you're finished, it'll stick up in that one spot. That's what it's like when you add a stitch. When you miss a stitch, it looks like this, because I've done it so many times. You pop your hook in, you accidentally skipped a stitch, jumped into the next, and you go like that. And I'm going to do a normal stitch after it so you can see. I just want to show you these so you know what to expect in those rows. When you miss a stitch, you're going to get, it's going to tug in. That is great when you are doing um, decreasing and it's still not right because you kind of need to do the both of them together to do a decrease. So, and after a few rows, you're going to have a massive gap there so just remembering to count your stitch on every row or your washcloth is not going to look even okay so go ahead and do your the rows that you need for your washcloth and i'll meet you back here in a moment Alrighty, guys here i have one almost finished washcloth yay 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 gorgeous and don't you just love the stitch yeah let me get you a nice close-up so you can have a look and by the way See how nice and straight our edges are? And that's because we use those two single crochets to help us straighten up, okay? All right, so I'm going to finish off this row. And as you can see, I messed with color just a little bit. And I weaved in ends, which I'm going to show you with the last end what to do, okay? So that's that, you have finished. All right, so what you're going to do? And unless you want to do a few more rows, that's fine. But I'm finishing off, so I'm going to pull my thread through. My piece, a 
crotch measures eight inches or 20 centimeters roughly and the other way it measures eight and a half inches or 21 centimeters roughly let's do that a little bit closer because i don't know whether you saw that no, not that close <laughs> all right so there you go all right well you know what let's try the dark side how's that is that better you can see now ah uh, that's better so you have um, eight and a half inches roughly or well, almost eight and a half or 21 centimeters um, and width wise you have roughly eight now it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter it's it's actual preference so if you cast on 30 stitches yours is going to be a lot wider than mine if you did a few extra rows yours is going to be longer now I like to have mine the size of my hand when I'm stretched so for me, this is actually rather big. However, it's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do now, and we're not going to dog anymore. I'm going to take out, firstly, I'm going to take all these stitch markers out because we don't need those anymore. <laughs> we're done with you. All right, now weaving in your end. Now we pulled a knot right here, yes? Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to take that knot undone. We're thinking, what? True, that is the way we have been taught throughout our history of crochet to pull that knot there. I'm not going to do that this time. We're going to go back to that second last stitch. Okay, we're going to pop our hook in, pull a loop through, jump into your stitch and finish it off almost. Go through the last three stitches, the two there. Now ordinarily you would pull your loop and go through these two stitches. You're going to pull your loop, you're going to go through the stitches and you're just going to leave it like that. And you're thinking, what? That's going to come undone. Yes, it will. Ordinarily, it will. Now I'm going to cut this because I've been splitting it. By playing with it, I've been splitting it. <laughs> All right. So we are going to weave that end in. Okay. Is it splitting? It kind of split, but it's okay. The split is staying in it. <laughs> All right. So this is where we are at the end of our row. Now what we're going to do, turning our work. See that loop there? All we're going to do is pass your needle, pass your needle under that loop and the loop that you're in, making sure that knot happens. So your knot is actually at the back of your work, right? Now you grab your little thread and you're passing it back through the stitch there, at the back of the stitch, like so. Did I not do that tight enough? Yep, that's fine. Pull it back into a stitch wherever you want there on the side. And you've kind of closed up shop a little bit there. Okay. Now you've got to find a place to put this. <laughs> that's the back of your work. What's well, the back of my work? I'm just going to find another stitch close by. Pop it in there. Pull it through. And now I'm going to get as close as I can to an area where I can weave in from here. Oops, I'm out of frame. I'm going to get as close as I can to an area where I can weave in from here. All right. So I'm just going to pop through another thread right there. Yes. And then um, maybe one over here. From there. Just the one thread at a time. Yeah. So it doesn't look over bulky. And then there's another thread right here. Oh, I get the needle in. Supposed to be a really good needle this. I'm so disappointed in it today. It's probably just the uh, the handler. <laughs> hey, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was someone else. <laughs> All right, so that's that. And now you can just find a place that you can weave into under some stitches. All right, just turning it to the back and just making sorry to the front, making sure you can't see it. Look how split that yarn is. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> well, I must admit, cotton does that, and this cotton does that a lot. I've noticed. All right, now you grab your needle and you go back the other way in a different section so you don't unravel what you've already weaved in. All right, just going back the other way like so. Yes, and you know what? You're not finished yet because yours truly absolute stickler when it comes to ends. I'm going back, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to check 
see if my needle no you can't see it so perfect pull that through and I'm glad I went back because everything is falling apart on me here <laughs> see how split that is it's all falling apart on me oh dear lucky I finished when I could because you know <laughs> that's not going to work for me all right so that's one end that you have done right there all right I'm going to let you um, head off on your own to do that end Oh, there we go. Let you head off on your own to do that end. That one there, you just have to find a space at the back that you can weave into. Probably or preferably go up a little bit and then hide your thread under some stitches at the back, of course. And doesn't this linked double crochet stitch look gorgeous? You don't see as many gaps as you would with a double crochet. It's not as tight as it would be with a half double crochet. And it looks simply divine, giving your work a beautiful textured stitch. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you do for me. And all I want to say right now, guys, is ciao for now.